Hello. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, I could do the introduction right now over the uh, highlights yeah. so I can kind of get a sense for it. So, hey, everybody, welcome to District Con District Talks. Rain Talks. Right. Yeah. Rain, Rain Talks. Rain Talks. Rain <laughs> Talks. Okay, on the page, uh, we're going to be talking to Chris Toast today. Chris is, and correct me if I, I blow this at any point, a two time Mazel. Uh, all, uh, all year goalkeeper, goalkeeper of the year, and also has represented the United States at the Beach Soccer World Cup on multiple occasions, most recently in Paraguay uh, last year, and is coming to talk to us about his career, how he got there. You can see in the background, um, he's getting some work done which, with the beach soccer team over in, was that in Paraguay though? No, guys. no, that was in Portugal in 2017 for the Mundalito. Okay, and then here you are. I recognize this. This is San Diego Soccer's. This is your indoor career with uh, Mazel, which is the uh, Men's Professional Indoor Soccer League. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to be talking about uh, your career, how you got there, what it's like, how you're training, how you're uh, staying sane with the quarantine going on right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's a, I'm a three time now because I was just voted. So oh. three time MASL uh, goalkeeper of the year. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you know, right now just kind of, you know, soccer and kind of just everywhere is all shut down. So for me, um, you know, it's important for me to kind of just stay in shape and stay active. I, I'm usually always active within season and out of season, just with going to the gym or um, just kind of keeping up with skills here and there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with indoor and beach being the two two games that I played, um, obviously different games to outdoor. I'm sure we'll get into that later. But, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of like as soon as uh, indoor finishes, beach kind of starts. So I'm always kind of like playing and I have a little bit of break in between. Um, or after beach, kind of before indoor. Um, so for me, it's really important to kind of stay active and stay ready and being ready to compete. Um, and right now, during the quarantine, just trying to, you know, stay active and uh, just kind of staying ready, just in case they decide to finish out the season um, for the MASL. Um, if they don't, then they don't, but at least I'm, I'm prepared. How long is the season for indoor? Uh, the season is four months and uh, with playoffs, you can probably tag on about another month. So if you go to the final, it's about five months. And you're playing for uh, Ontario, California right now. How, how's their season looking right now? Do you want it to be cut off now, or are you hoping <laughs> to keep it running? Oh, no, 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 no. We were, we were actually struggling quite a bit. We were two and seven um, to start off the season. And then all of a sudden, uh, we have a player named Frank Tai who just uh, won the MVP award. Um, we changed that, and we went – what were we 13 and nine as soon as this shut down oh, we were um, probably the hottest team in the league uh and playoffs were three games away so for us we were we were just hitting you know our peak at the right time and for us unfortunately the you know the season has finished right i don't know well i mean it's a crazy time and i mean hopefully it could be back to normal soon i, I wanted to start with talking about your road to being where you are today and like going taking all the way back and i remember you were telling me when you were training me about how your dad would be uh kicking your butt i, I don't know what kind of language you're allowed to use here matt like um, i mean it's like it's not a kid's show it's, it's okay player player centric um, okay so keep it cleanish yeah yeah okay that's what i just want to be sure i want to be sure uh, you know you just be kicking your butt basically uh talking about how you uh 
your dad's career, um, how I was wondering how that affected how you looked at playing pro soccer and how that influenced you when you were training as a kid back then. Sure. Um, so I'll kind of go into my dad's story a little bit here, not too long, but, uh, anyway, he, uh, was born and raised in Hungary, Budapest. Um, it's in Europe in case anybody didn't know. Um, so he was born, raised there. He played for a club team, um, Uipest FC, which is in Budapest. Um, and kind of before all that, my grandfather played at the same club as well and represented the national team and, and all that. So my dad had already been looking up to his father um, to playing on the national team and representing, you know, in the same club and the country and all that. So anyway, um, he had a very successful career um, playing outdoor in Europe, played in Champions Leagues, um, was actually on the national team, uh, was supposed to go to... I forgot what, I forget which year it is, but he was supposed to play in the World Cup, but he actually got injured, um, but he was selected, and the injury actually, uh, you know, he wasn't able to make it anymore. Um, so, but back then, uh, Hungary was kind of a communist country, uh, something we don't, you know, we're not familiar with at all here. Um, so he actually defected and, and left the country and came here. Um, he was banned from FIFA for two years uh, in the country, so he wasn't able to play. Um, but back then, indoor was not affiliated with FIFA, and nor is it now. And so he was able to play FIFA, or excuse me, indoor soccer. And uh, he joined, I believe, the New York uh, Arrows to begin with and played a few seasons out there, actually won a championship. Um, then uh, he met my mom in New York. He came to San Diego, played for the San Diego Soccers, won five championships with them, went to St. Louis um, and played there. And he's one of the all-time greats in uh, indoor soccer. Um, he's in the Hall of Fame for it and whatnot. So, you know, I, me just even stepping foot into the indoor game was, uh, you know, I already had a kind of a target on my back a bit here. You know, I had a lot to live up to. Um, but anyways, in outdoor, he was very successful as well um in in hungary as you know i've gone to europe and played in the hungarian beach soccer league um for two seasons and uh there's actual statue out there at, uh it used to be at pushkash uh stadium i don't know if, if you guys know who pushkash is but he's one of the great players you know of all time um but there's a statue and every player's name who's represented the national team is on that statue. My dad and my grandfather's name was on that statue when I visited. It was a really cool moment to see that. And uh, anyway, that's kind of how that all began. You know, it was kind of in the blood, um, you know, growing up, being a kid, my dad would always take us and, you know, train whether it was goalkeeper or on the field. Um, Cause I played both. Um, and for me, you know, uh, the trainings that he would put me through were a lot of things of, you know, speed work, things that you'll see goalkeepers do quite a bit of getting up off the ground, getting across the goal, collecting crosses, things of that kind of nature um, of the game of actually the position. And so for me, you know, the training that he put me through was a lot of stuff, just getting up off the ground, being fast, you know, that was always the thing. And even for Michael, I would, uh, I would train you the same way, you know, get up off the ground, make this save here, get back across, make this save there. All right, relax. So that's kind of what it was. Um, so for me to play soccer, it was just like kind of, you know, that's just what it was going to be, you know? <laughs> so. Makes sense. And then were you playing like high school for your school and then also for a club team outside of school or what was that kind of set up when you were a uh, high school? Yeah. Age? Yeah. So uh, in high school, um, my freshman year, I was playing, I played freshman soccer, uh, and I was actually playing on the field. Um, I was a field player then. Um, actually, I had a, I was born with a heart disease, um, and I've had open heart surgery now twice, once when I was first born, and then when I was a sophomore in high school. Um, so for me, there was a possibility of not playing soccer anymore uh, in my sophomore year. So I had a uh, it's called, uh, what was it? It's something like a bypass, but my original surgery was a transposition of the great arteries. And then my second surgery was kind of like where they had stitched my pulmonary artery. They, uh, it hadn't grown at, in that time. So it's kind of stayed the same size as when I was a kid. 
So they operated and take, took out that piece of the artery and put in somebody else's in a small little section. So after all this surgery kind of went down, the doctors are like, hey, well, listen, you know, we're okay with you playing soccer, but you know, it would be best if you play goalkeeper just because of your health condition. So at that point I was kind of like in between already. So then I was like, all right, that's the push to go play, go back into goal. So um, my sophomore year, I pretty much missed out. I played maybe like two games after my uh, surgery and um, I was playing on the field a little bit. And then after that, I made the transition to the goal. So my junior year, I tried out as a goalkeeper um, being familiar with, you know, the position, but haven't played it for some bit of time. Um, and there were some good goalkeepers, you know, already at the school at the time, um, that were, that were good, you know, and I was gonna have to compete and, and try to win a spot. And I did that. I just pushed myself and I knew that I could win this, win the spot. And, uh, my junior year, I ended up being, uh, here it's the all avocado league. That's the league that we played in. And I was the first team goalkeeper for that. And uh, all North County team junior year and senior year um, went to CIA finals in my junior year, ended up losing um, senior year. We lost somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in the playoffs, but uh, yeah, that's kind of my high school career, how that all went down. That's, that's a lot to go through in, in such a short time. So my, my big question is how, how did you deal with the, the pressure um, of, you know, be, being a soccer family, how did you deal with that pressure? And then the added um, kind of injury and, and recovery, uh, getting back to, to such a high level, how did you manage that? Yeah, so for me, soccer was always something I wanted to do, no matter what. Um, as soon as I was, you know, there was a possibility that I may not be able to play anymore. So that was kind of, you know, that was the most difficult part. But as soon as they said, hey, you know, there's a surgery and we can do this. And, you know, if you do it, you know, the chances are good that you're going to play. So once I saw that kind of light at the end of the tunnel, per se, I, you know, was really excited. It didn't matter if it was goalkeeper or on the field. I knew that I would train and to you know, I mentally, I would be strong enough to uh, get through it and to push myself and to be the, you know, if I'm going to do something, um, you know, I want to do it to the best of my ability or else, you know, why really do it at all? Yeah. So, you know, as, as soon as that happened, I just, I pushed myself wanting to be the best at whatever it was I was doing, whether it was center mid striker, center back or goalkeeper, I just wanted to be the best at it. Yeah. Fantastic. No. I wanted to, I don't know, Matt, if you got any more questions about the high school um, no. stuff. I was going to, I was going to ask, so you, you come out of high school, you're, uh, you said you're the uh, all, all team uh, North County goalkeeper for high school. Are you thinking at that point, like I'm on the first plane to Europe or how is, how did you see a career moving, uh, you know, from there? Yeah, that's a good question because here in the U S uh, you know, the, the, the route that everybody normally does is college. And that's my advice now is, yeah, I think that's the best option unless you have something, um, you know, for sure set up in Europe. Uh, I did not, I actually went one year to uh, junior college and uh, you know, for me, school just wasn't for me. I always just wanted to play to play, you know, when I was in school, I was thinking about playing, always thinking about playing. Um, so I did one year of junior college, actually played on the field because I was cleared after I do a, uh, I do a yearly checkups with my doctor. And at that time he was like, Chris, I, you know, I clear you to play on the field to do whatever you want. So that was really cool. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go back and play on the field because we actually have a decent goalie here and it, you know, whatever, let's just run around a bit. So I played one year. And then uh, after that, I was kind of uh, just searching on the internet, like kind of back to your question a little bit, trying to figure out, all right, am I going to play college ball or do I want to try to go and go to like USL or do I want to try to go to Europe? Because I am, you know, I have a dual citizenship. That was a possibility. Um, but I saw an ad in the paper, um, you know, Hey, uh, San Diego soccer's tryout. So I was like, huh, well, dad used to play for uh, the San Diego soccer's like, let's just go try out. So I went, I tried out. Um, I made the reserve squad. Uh, I didn't make the starting squad, um, which was fine. You know, it was, it's a whole new game. It's not something that it's like, oh, well, I've been playing outdoor my whole life. This should be easy. No, 
indoor is a completely different game. I mean, there's just, we can get into that later, but anyway, um, it, uh, I went to the trial, made it, went to the reserve team, put my time in and, uh, kind of from there, I've been, you know, just playing indoor and, and beach kind of evolved later, but, uh, there was a point during, I think it was my third season playing indoor. Um, I did go overseas to pursue, um, trying to play outdoor. I went to Hungary and trained at the club that my dad played for with Uipest in Budapest. Um, I spent about a month there. I trained with that team for two weeks and I trained with another team in Hungary outside of Budapest, uh, called, uh, Gior ETO FC. And then I trained with a second division team out there, uh, Edgar FC, um, so I gave that a shot, but man, it's a whole different living style out there. I mean, I already had something kind of established here in San Diego with, you know, my dad being retired here, um, you know, his Jersey number being retired and the, the history that he has with the San Diego soccers, um, you know, and he did have a lot of history out in Hungary as well, but here I am somebody that's you know, grown up in the U S is used to this lifestyle that we have here, which is so amazing. Um, going there and kind of just starting all over per se, um, was kind of something to think about, you know, as a 21 year old where, you know, at 21, they're looking at me going, Hey man, you're kind of a little old to be over here. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I just turned 21. Like, and I'm talking to like 17, you know, 16 year olds, 18, if you know that. And uh, so it was interesting. So I decided, you know, I actually had a, a an offer to stay um, and, and play and, you know, try to develop. But I also was thinking and, uh, you know, I just decided to come back and to pursue indoor. I don't know, Matt, if you wanted to switch off from questions here, if you had one right now. No, I mean, it's uh, – no, I don't have anything. <laughs> I, I was just, I'm just curious, you know, how, um, how, do you, how do you feel like you measured up to some of the guys at these kinds of clubs? Because, like, especially the first division clubs, how, how much of a gap is there between, like, a, a guy like you who's playing um, here in you – know, you know, U.S. indoor, um, and is it one a deal where you have to go, like if you're going to play in Europe, you have to be something, uh, going over there at 16, 17 years old and being in an academy and all that, or is it a matter of you think of kind of getting lucky and finding a team that needs a, a player in that position there? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, it really comes down to the work that you want to put in. Like, uh, I guess I, I think kind of what you're asking me is the difference of level, like if where I kind of where I'm at compared to where those guys are at per se in uh, Europe, I guess. Um, you know, if if you're looking to go, you know, to Europe and you want to do that, um, well, it's going to take a lot of work, you know, and uh, you're going to have to be humble uh, and you're just going to have to keep working because, you know, I, I've, I haven't played overseas outdoor um but i have played overseas beach soccer a lot and i play against some of the best players in the world i mean the brazilian national team is ridiculously yeah. good um ronaldinho is over there playing with the beach team and you know there's maradona is standing right there in the stands watching us play i mean i played in front of patrick vieira i don't know if you guys know but patrick vieira and <clears throat> all these big time names um and so uh you know if you're if that's something you want to do. You just got to put in the work and just stay humble. So I, yeah, I have a, a question. So to kind of follow up on that one, um, you coming in as a, a 21 year old and talking about like 16 and 17 year olds that are over there kind of saying you're old at, at this point, how do you think, <clears throat> or what do you think the difference is in, in preparation that kind of gives them that, that place to, to say that, like in our development at 16, you're 21 and, and now you're old, depending on where we are. Sure. Well, I think that <clears throat> at 21 over there, they're either on the first team or they're, they're kind of somewhere, right? Um, whereas those 16-year-olds were on like the uh, reserves or like developmental team. 
Mm -hmm. um and i'm kind of coming in at 21 so they're kind of looking at it like damn like you're 21 like my friend over there is 21 and he's practicing with the first team um so that's kind of where i think that came from um but i also went there which was kind of funny but uh when i did go there they were asking me well where did you go play college why aren't you in the mls and i'm like man like you guys don't understand how it works over there to here you know you guys from school you guys just keep playing and that's what it is in Europe I mean they they go to school the bus picks them up from school takes them straight to soccer practice Mm -hmm. um waits there picks them back up and drops them all off at home that's one scenario the other scenario is the school is actually part of the club they go to school and it's at the soccer field then they go out of the classroom they go train you know they go do everything to then they go they go shower and then they all go home it's like they do that until who knows when if they make it or don't make it but they're getting both they're getting schooling and they're doing soccer at the same time which is excellent because in the future they're set up yeah and that's what we're trying to set up here in dc it's the the basis of you know our our future development plans is you know because a lot of times in america you'll have guys that are going to school and then they can't come to practice because they have a paper for school or they have this other thing to do for school but if you put them all together that holistic development is going to really be taking place. For sure. And I, you know, I was asking that initial question because when I would, you know, train with you, you know, when you were my coach and I, I'd see you, I'd see you play in the, the certain times and you'd get in a goal to kind of show us how it's done. I'd say, you know, Jesus, like I could see this guy, you know, in, in the top flight league playing. And I, you know, it seems like, I don't know if you, you share this opinion, but like the, the way, we do soccer in the United States. You got to, it feels like you got to get even more lucky than a guy in Europe in a sense that, uh, or, or is it, or is it not, you know, kind I of feel mess- like my chances of playing in the U S um, kind of took a hit when I decided not to go to college. That's kind of where I see it took a hit. I have, I have a lot of talent, um, but I, if I could go back, if I really wanted to play outdoor, I should have gone to college. I should have gone and I should have played um, because you do see a lot of, or you're seen in front of a lot of coaches throughout the the country that have all these connections with MLS, USL, whatever. Um, And those coaches have connections with coaches in Europe and other places in the world. And it's all kind of connect connects like that. Um, So for me, if, you know, thinking that I could just bypass it and go to Europe. Yeah. I, you know, for me, I think that's a lot harder. Um, you know, flights are expensive, agents are expensive, all that stuff yeah. costs money. You know, you can go to school and really find out, um, you know, if that's something you really want to do, because there's a lot of distractions out there, um, you know, to, to kind of make, you know, I had a brother that was a really good soccer player, went to school and he doesn't play soccer anymore and that's okay. Um, mm-hmm. But you'll find out, you know, through that phase of your life, um, you know, if it's really for you, if you really want it. And for me, I felt like I really wanted it. I just, you know, just didn't want to go to school. I just wanted to play. Going back from like the hypothetical stuff to the past. So you're on the San Diego Soccer Reserve team. Um, How do you, how do you feel like you, how do you, how would you tell a player, how would you tell your past self how am I going to break out from this reserve team and get some minutes, impress the coaches? How, what kind of uh, mentality did that require? And like, what kind of you know, discipline did that require? <laughs> well, it took four years. This is what it took. Um, it took a long time and it took a lot of me just shutting my mouth and just stay humble and show up to practice and just try to impress no matter what, was said or uh what i may think i did really well what the coach didn't see or whatever um you know i an example that i tell even the young guys on my teams currently is hey you know like first two years that i played i had no contract i made no money doing what i was doing i just went because this is what i wanted to do um and i just went and i would get yelled at for being late to a game and i wasn't even playing I wasn't even close. I wasn't signed. And I showed up to the locker room to warm up the, the goalkeeper that is going to play. And I'm getting chewed out. And I'm like, hey, man, like, <laughs> you know, I'm not even 
technically part of the team, you know, I'm, I'm part of the, the reserve team and I'm getting chewed out here, you know, and it's just like, you know, you got to really, uh, well, for me, I just had to kind of just stay humble, work really, really hard and shut my mouth. And if, and I knew that if I did that, my opportunity would come. And when it did came, I took advantage of it. I made sure that. What was the opportunity? Was it like a first team go up player got injured or how? Did I won happen? 24 straight games, didn't lose one. <laughs> Fair enough. That'll, that'll impress some people, I think. <laughs> I had a question here, Matthew. I didn't want to. What's up? I know if you had a question here, I didn't want to keep. Uh, keep on. No, I mean, uh, one, one, one question that would kind of spring up from that is what what were you doing outside of soccer to kind of stay afloat during that time you were on the reserves? Like when, when you didn't have a contract? Yeah. Um, well, I was lucky, lucky enough then I was living with my parents, so I didn't have any like major bills or anything. Yeah. Um, but I was training a lot. I mean, I was coaching, I was doing a lot of goalkeeper training and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and just trying to figure out ways, uh, you know, to have money for things that I did need to pay for. Right. Um, but, you know, soccer was, you know, uh, that's what's awesome about the sport, you know, is if, you know, you want to play and you're not playing, well, you, you know, there's different avenues. You can coach, you know, you can do private training, you can pass things on to, to younger players. And that was a, a spot that I thought that I could do that. And that's what I did. Yeah. Fantastic. And so you're uh, playing for the first team, you know, you're hot as hell, you got 24 straight wins. And how did you make sure you were staying on your game, not getting complacent? And how was that kind of the mentality wise, the shift from being reserve player that got something to prove to first team goalie that's, uh, you know, playing week in, week out? Sure. Well, for me, like I said in the beginning, my dad had this huge, huge resume um, and a lot of old school fans from his era still watch the game currently. Um, so they know very well who he is. And when they see my name, they know who I am. Right. And so for me, it's really important to represent the family name. Um, and so for every game that I play, you know, there's always, you know, there's, there's always critics out there. And, uh, you know, it, for me, I like to make sure that there's not, you know, any questions about my game and stuff. So I just try to make sure that I show up and play the best that I can to my best ability. And it's a tough position mentally, you know, even just playing in high school. I feel like, you know, there's a lot, always a lot of pressure on being a goalie, a lot of pressure to succeed, not to not make a mistake. And any, you know, how inevitably when a mistake would happen, what was your kind of process for getting over it? and uh, getting back in your game. Yeah, um, it is a tough position. There's a lot of pressure with it, but it's the most important position. Um, there's not a lot of goal, you know, not everybody wants to be a goalie. And for youth teams, that's like the most difficult position to fill. Matt, I'm sure you know that, um, you know, it's difficult. Um, everybody wants to be the forward. Everybody wants to be this and that. When I was a kid, we used to get scored on, you know, and we'd get all sad, you know. Sometimes you cry, whatever. You feel like you let the team down, you know. Um, I still make mistakes here and there, and it sucks. But being a goalkeeper, you have to have a short memory. Um, you know, I, I made a mistake this current season. The ball, it was a free kick, kind of went right by, you know, 99 out of 100 times, I probably save it. You know, went through, went in. Hey, you know, my bad, guys. I got you on the next one. You know, just try to redeem yourself after that. Um, but, you know, you just got to move on past things like that. You can't let them drag you down. Yeah, I mean, it's an important mentality to have. And um, on that, you know, on the subject, you know, teamwork, communicating with the team. Um, I think that, you know, one of the things a lot of people don't realize if you're just kind of casually walking soccer is, you know, it's one of the goalie's main jobs is to communicate with the team, be organizing that defense. And, you know, how would you say that you try to, try to work with the team, marshal the defense, 
do you have a personal style with that? Do you have a personal, do you try to connect with the, be part of defensive unit or you feel like you're kind of doing your own thing and then the defense is trying to make sure you're not too busy? So for me, I feel like the goalkeeper should be the coach's almost assistant coach, almost like on the field per se. He's like in charge, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, he's like the quarterback. Okay. Well, the same thing. No problem. Um, in indoor soccer, we play six per side. Um, in beach, we play five per side. So for me, I'm kind of talking to everybody because in beach and in indoor, everybody plays defense. Nobody is above it. You know, in outdoors, sometimes you get a forward, you know, or you, it, the space is so big that you don't technically need everybody to get back unless, you know, you're in the last minutes or whatever. So for me, I'm talking constantly, even if it's attacking, I'm, I'm always talking. Um, in outdoor, as a goalkeeper, I always try to make sure that my back four were always sliding, checking shoulders, making sure they knew who their marks were. Um, and it's important because they're trying to read the game as well. So you have to move where I'm just kind of like standing and watching and, and just trying to like coach, right? Trying to make the, the coach's job a little easier. He can kind of focus more on, you know, whatever, the midfield, the tactics of the other team, anything like that. Um, but that's also, you know, center midfielders, even center backs. Like they all have to communicate to one another. Um, but the goalkeeper, everybody likes a goalkeeper that talks. And the more you talk, the more it's going to help your game and for a coach to actually recognize you as well. Awesome. That's definitely a, a huge point. How did you start to develop your, your communication? Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Cause I, in school I was kind of like shy, but yeah. around the game, I was just so comfortable with the game. You know, I loved it. And like, it was like a, whole different me kind of person you know like oh at school and around my friends I was like this but then when I played I was like this yeah. you know and I think it was just the competitiveness um in me to want to win um so when I was I mean I've always been barking and yelling at my defenders um just you know friendly things like hey slide this way that way or whatever yeah. Yeah. um ever since I could remember um you know and and it's important for the goalkeeper. Like I said, you, you know, you got to, you got to command the back. But for me, it was just, uh, just wanting to win, you know, making sure things are done right in the way that I see them. And if I'm wrong, well, then it's the coach's job to make that adjustment. But at least, you know, I'm saying something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think saying something like, even if it's not necessarily tactically uh, immediately pertinent, um, saying something is better than just like standing back there waiting for something yeah absolutely and definitely like i know from experience like keeps the back line together because they'll just they'll start to wander off and like oh i'm a center back i want to do this uh and having that goalkeeper kind of centralize everything is is really helpful yes yes yeah, i could tell you um i when i was trying out for some teams in dc uh you know, I, I could tell some of the guys weren't too used to having a uh, goalie screaming at them because uh, Chris, you taught me well. So I'd be screaming, shift, shift, you know, and like, who is this guy? Like, why is he telling me what he, but um, and a lot of them don't know how to respond. Why are you talking to me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, don't yeah. tell me what to do. I was like, yeah. Right. So it, it, it's part of the, you know, communication, like all the great teams, like they're talking and, you know, they're, they're making, they're on the same wavelength. And I, I see it when you play and then, Getting to the next party crew, beach soccer. How well? First off, how did you get into that? Um, it's not something I think uh, as many people know about. It. A lot of people know arena. A lot of people know outdoor. Yeah. How'd you get into beach? Okay, so beach soccer. Um, I was currently playing with the San Diego Soccer's. I think it may have been like my second, second or third year with the team. Um, there was a local tournament uh, that was happening here in San Diego, and uh, the soccer's put a team in and it so happened to be that the u.s national team was in this tournament um and san diego also put in their re the reserve team so i ended up playing with the reserve team in the tournament but anyway the national team was there because they were preparing for a tournament that was going to happen in miami um maybe like two weeks later whatever mm -hmm. um so i went to the tournament played um 
we, my team ended up getting eliminated, never played beach soccer before, you know, gone to the beach and, and, you know, dribble the ball around and kick it, whatever, like we all have, you know, it's fun and great, but you know, I was like, damn, beach soccer, this is like a real thing. So we play a tournament, San Diego soccer's, they win it, whatever. So there's the next tournament that happens here in San Diego, which is a really, really big tournament here in the U S um, it's in Oceanside, California. It's called the beach soccer championships. Um, they, we, where they draw like over 30,000 people to like, you know, it's all club teams. It's a, there's a pro division, whatever. Um, so I played with the soccer. So my buddy, Nick Pereira, who's also on the team and plays indoor with the Tacoma stars, whatever he, uh, played in the Fiesta Island tournament before the big Oceanside tournament with So they actually pulled Nick to the national team for the Oceanside tournament to see him perform with the national team. So here we are playing, um, you know, our, our side of the whole group and bracket. And then here's the U S national team playing on this. And so we end up meeting them in the final San Diego soccer is versus U S national team. Um, so we end up actually beating the national team in the final. Um, and we win four, three and, my buddy Nick Pereira was already on the team, uh, goes to the Miami Cup. They end up – I think they won one game, I think, against Spain, or maybe they won two games against Spain and Mexico, ended up losing. Trip that's coming up like three weeks later, and he tells the coach, hey, you know, you guys should should uh, try out my, my friend that was on the San Diego soccer team. He was the goalie and, and see what he's got. So, go, okay, so – we go to Mexico. Um, we're supposed to play the Mexican national team. They end up not showing up for some reason. Who knows? I don't know what happened. But we, we ended up playing a club team, a local club team from there. And they were they actually had some national team players on that side. Um, and so the team already had a goalkeeper. In beach soccer, you can dress two goalkeepers, just like outdoor. But in beach, you can flip-flop. You know, they can go back in whenever. Um, so they played – the other guy, the first two periods, and I played the last period. We were down, I think, like 5-0, 5-1, something like that after two periods. And then I go in, and I think the game ended like 5-3 or 5-4, whatever. So the next day, we end up playing them again. Well, I started the whole, you know, started the match, and we're winning uh, 4-0. And, you know, it's after the second period. There's three periods in beach. Um, they decide to put the other guy in, boom, we win the game. And that's kind of when I got like my opportunity was like, you know, I had the opportunity to go there, but I had to make sure that I get another opportunity. So after that, I went to, um, uh, Brazil and I played in a place called Rio Kenchi, which is in the jungle pretty much in Brazil. Um, it's like a, Oh, uh, hot springs area, really nice, like vacation spot. Anyway, we go out there and we play Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico. And we ended up losing all the games. We lost two games in penalty kicks to Argentina and Mexico, but I did really well out there. Um, but then the World Cup qualifiers were coming up in for the beach soccer World Cup that was going to take place in Tahiti. And so I went and played in that. Um, I trained really, really hard to solidify myself as the starting goalkeeper for that tournament. Um, ended up winning the starting job. Um, played every single game. We won the whole thing. We qualified for the World Cup, and I came out with the CONCACAF Best Goal uh, Goalkeeper of the Tournament Award. Um, so that was a big deal. And then after that, I went to Tahiti and played in the 2013 FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup. And that's kind of where my I ha I've had a really, really good performance in the games that I played. Um, probably the best game I've ever played in my career was against Tahiti. Um, and uh, that's kind of where my name worldwide kind of like expanded a bit, you know, kind of yeah. people took notice. Um, and that's just kind of how that all began. I mean, it's awesome. And it, it sounds just like a whole adventure. You know, you're talking about, um, you know, only a year or two after getting the team playing in these, you know, international tournaments. I want to clear something up though. You said Ronaldinho, was around the Brazil beach soccer team. Did you ever play? 
I've not played against. Okay. No, I've not played. I want, against, I was, he, I want to yeah, he played in a. He played in a uh, a friendly game for them. You can actually okay, research okay. it on YouTube, but he's in there. Uh, they played against Japan, is who it was. Um, and Ronaldinho played. And and the thing is, Brazil in Brazil, those guys play on the beach every day. They play a, okay. something called football, which is a great, great game and tool for your first touch. I mean, I play it quite a bit just because I'm in beach soccer and, and whatever, but the, the, the style of play that beach soccer requires um, really, really helps um, in outdoor. If you can control the ball in the air, in the sand, dribble on the sand and have complete control of it, well, guess what? When the ball rolls, I mean, it, you're just going to be that much better. Yeah. And is there any way to get into beach soccer? Like you said, there's clubs and stuff for, you know, younger players. Is that an avenue people can pursue or is it more? Uh... Uh, hmm. Well, there are some tournaments like Virginia Beach, for instance, has a, the biggest tournament yeah, yeah, yeah. possibly in the world as far as uh, attendance goes. Um, and they have all kind of age groups. I know in Michigan, they also have another big beach soccer tournament. And then here in California, the Oceanside tournament, which is really big. Um, as far as for those tournaments in the U S I, I would think that beach soccer is kind of like, you know, a local kind of thing. It, it either it happens or it doesn't happen. Um, you know, if you want to get into it, you know, the best way it's a small community of players, you know, everybody kind of knows everybody. So, you know, you may know somebody that's played it and know somebody, you know what I mean? And then you can kind of get in, involved that way. It's not too difficult. Um, you know, it, it beach soccer in the U S is really just kind of starting to kick off and people are starting to take notice. So if there's ever a time to get into it, it's now. Awesome. And then being a pro now, you know, we're kind of in the tail end of the conversation. So I want to get into, you know, what you're doing now. Um, what does so assuming there's no worldwide pandemic, mm -hmm. what does uh, your average like in season practice day training day? What kind of commitment is it like being a pro player? Uh, yeah, well, like I said, when I do something, you know, especially with soccer, um, I want to do it to my best. So uh, when I'm in season, I there's not really any coaching going on unless I'm you know decide to do some privates here and there. But anyway. I'm waking up. I go to a gym here locally. Um, not like your normal 24 hours, 24 hour fitness gym. I go to uh, like a CrossFit kind of gym um, that specialize in athletic needs, you know, of, Hey, you're a goalkeeper. All right, well, let's do this, this, and this because it works for your position. Now I only started doing this like two years ago. So a lot of you may think, Oh, well, I don't have some, you know, I can't do anything like that. Well, before all this, I used to just come up with exercises that I used to think of that would help me in my game, um, whether it would be just jumping over hurdles or soccer balls or whatever, um, always staying active um, and just working out and trying to just push myself to be stronger, faster, you know, all those kind of things to help my game. Um, so I do that currently. I go to the gym almost every single day. Um, you know, in the season, it's, it's kind of hard because, you know, the games and the practices kind of start taking a toll. Um, but I probably go to the gym more when I'm out of season. Um, so then I'll go to practice, um, you know, go to practice. I do that, whatever I need to do. Um, some days I'll have my dad come with me and I'll work on things that I think I need to work on. I'll spend an hour with him, maybe a half an hour before and like half an hour going into it and then, you know, do the, hour and a half training. Um, and then after that, uh, you know, I, I usually just come home. I, I'll watch some film on kind of who I'm playing or, you know, either myself or our team and just kind of see some strengths and weaknesses. And, and uh, that I kind of call it, you know, I, I kind of just, all right, get away from soccer a little bit here. Um, but, you know, being, you know, my in season, I'm always thinking about the game. Right. Yeah. And what are, you, what are you doing now to, to keep that schedule? Yeah. So now, um, you know, obviously my gym is, is, you know, shut down with everything else. Um, so I just, I, I do workouts here in my garage. You know, I, I have a small little gym in my garage that I'll go and I'll do a workout and, uh, 
you know, sometimes I'll go in the backyard, I'll juggle the ball a little bit, you know, there's not too much as a goalkeeper that you can really do on your own. Um, you know, you're kind of limited uh, mm-hmm. to an extent. Right. Um, but for me, it's just, you know, I can watch film, I can study still, I can do all that. Um, and I can just make sure that I'm physically ready to go back whenever that is. Right. Yeah, I, I think with a lot of players now are going to be getting deeper into the tactical <laughs> side of the game. So this next crop of Americans that are, are coming up, we're going to have, you know, some real tacticians because they haven't been able to, to play. They haven't been able to, to be on the field. So that they'll have to develop that discipline of watching film and, and really understanding the game a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. Film is a great tool. It's something that, you know, my dad wished that he had back when he played, when there was no film, you know, and it's just something that's there. I mean, it's everywhere, all over the internet. Um, you know, you can just watch some of the greatest players to play the game and just study them. Um, it's a great tool. Yeah. And then when you're, so you were saying a couple of years ago that you did some coaching. Um, and when you're looking at your players, how, first off, how, how what age group were you coaching then? I've coached all different ages. Uh, last year I coached uh, 2001 boys and 2003 boys. So, you know, 17s and like 16 year olds. Before that I was coaching like nine year olds. Um, and before that, even, you know, kind of the same age, nine year old, 10 year old. And so when you're coaching, you know, maybe the older kids for more re- relevant to uh, sure. district, what are you looking for in the players what kind of characteristics makes a player stand out and, you know, what is an ideal U17, U16 player look like? Sure. Um, for me, you got to be coachable, right? Got to be coachable. Um, that's a big, big thing for coaches. Um, but also talent, you know, um, speed, technical ability, tactical. Um, how do you make adjustments? Uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, everybody has kind of their, you know, thing that they look for. Um, but for me, it's just, I'm a really technical player as a goalkeeper. I mean, you guys can watch more of those videos if you want, but I'm very technical and I'm a kind of a perfectionist. So I like my players to be very technical, um, you know, fitness and all that stuff. Like for me, it's kind of like, why come to practice to go run? You know, you should be doing that on your own. That's something that you can do. You should already be doing it. That's kind of going to separate you from, you know, the other person that's trying out. Um, so for me, practice is more like, all right, well, let's really do the work that, you, you know, like this is what you come here for, right? So. Yeah, totally. Um, Matthew, I know you had some more questions about the – you know, amateur to pro transition or, you know, playing um, or coaching? I mean, I, we, I think we've covered a, a lot um, kind of in, the, in those transitions. Hmm. Um, when it, one question that I would have is the, the transition between beach and, and uh, indoor, does that change your approach to, you know, how, how you play as a, as a goalkeeper, your approach to the game? Yeah. So that's a very, very common question I get. Um, And this year was a crazy year because literally last year's indoor season ended and I went straight to beach soccer to prepare for a uh, World Cup qualifier. And so we qualified and then went and did all these trips all summer, went to a World Cup in November, and then literally the day I got back, went up to practice to go play indoor. Um, So... For me, there's a lot of differences. Um, When I prepare for beach soccer, I have to be a little bit more reactive, but I also have to remember that I have to stay on my feet more because when the ball hits the ground, it's like another shooter per se. Like the ball can bounce kind of anywhere. Whereas like your traditional goalkeeping is like, oh, the ball is going to my right. I guess I'll just fall and lay down and, and, you know, and and just dive on the ball where in beach, you got to kind of slide across because that ball might change. Um, The biggest thing though, that that is one of them but the biggest thing is actually the uh physical uh demands of beach soccer so 
that game is so difficult. I mean, you guys can imagine running, just running, doing one sprint in the sand, you're winded. Well, now play 36 minutes, and I'm the goalkeeper, and I play, you know, I like to play the whole game. So for me, I got to be very, very fit. Um, and that's just one thing that, you know, for me, I hate having to, to run and put in that work. It sucks, but when you go and you compete, it's worth it, especially when you win. Um, so for me, that's the biggest, uh, the biggest difference is between indoor and, uh, beach is just the physical demand that it requires. Um, and then obviously, like I said, the technical part of the game, I have to be very good with my feet because the beach soccer game has evolved, um, with the goalkeeping position to where goalies are now being like an extra attacker because you're playing five per side. So you're, you're, you're using the goalie as an extra number to create advantages, whether on the sides or whatever the case may be. And indoor is the same way. Um, having good feet as a goalkeeper is really, really important in those games. Um, yeah. And in outdoor as well, coaches are always looking for goalkeepers. I mean, the games kind of changed. Neuer kind of did that with outdoor being right. like a sweeper keeper kind of thing, yeah, um, exactly which is really that. important to the, to today's game. For sure. How much, how much of your, your, your physical conditioning takes place on the beach, like outside of just like training with the ball? How much of the physical, how much do I do? Yeah. So normally, I mean, just doing all the technical work on the beach on the sand is already demanding. <laughs> um, so that's already like a workout, but you know, there's times in the game where, you know, I got to go and make this sprint or I got to go and make a save here and get up and make a save there. And then all kinds of different factors that happen, but uh, pretty much, you know, I'll do a, a training session. It'd be like a warm up, a technical warm up. Um, kind of after that, do uh, some shot blocking, kind of moving across goal, getting up, doing all that kind of stuff um, for my goalkeeping uh, training. And then after that, at the end, um, I'll probably do like some doggies, like just freaking sprint to a cone and back. I'll do it like, you know, three times and I'll do like five sets, six sets, whatever it is. Or, all right, you see the lifeguard tower over there, just run there and run back and just try to really feel that, that, that fatigue and, and find that and know that you can get through it is kind of what I try to do. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we're coming up on the one hour mark here. I wanted to, Please get this question. It doesn't have to be the closing question, but okay. you know, we got a lot of players, uh, you know, younger guys ranging you know, from 15 all the way up to uh, early 20s. What would you say to them, you know, in their in their point of development uh, in their careers? Like, what do you think is important to keep in mind? What do you think is important to develop? And uh, is there any advice you'd have for some of that age playing soccer? For soccer? Uh, hmm. For me... I would say you got to stay humble and you got to stay hungry. Um, two, two things, you know, that I felt were successful for me was just always working, um, thinking about, you know, how bad I want it um, and how I'm going to beat out my competition pretty much. And when I do get an opportunity, how I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity, you know, visual, um, what do, you, what do they call that? Where you just kind of envision things, right? That's a really, really important tool. Um, just kind of envisioning, you know, Im imagining success. Um, you know, that's something I kind of do a lot before games. Like, hey, man, like this is a big game. You know, I see, I don't see myself losing. I want to put myself in good, positive, uh, you know, kind of visions here to, to have some success. So that was, that's some, you know, something I would definitely advice yeah. that awesome. was that was also going to be my question <laughs> yeah. sorry still it sorry <laughs> no, you you good um yeah I, coming coming up on the on the end a lot of really really good information um that i think that the the wider community probably hasn't uh, ever encountered before so i really appreciate you coming on on to this um and helping us engage our players while we're not able to um, engage them in the traditional way. So yeah. definitely appreciate you coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. That's yeah, been awesome. Thanks for coming on, Chris. And uh, 
good luck. Hopefully the season uh, continues with that same record and you guys keep your form up. So uh, get on Ontario yeah. a trophy. Yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll see what happens. If not, then, you know, we'll, we'll see if some beach soccer kicks off and uh, we'll, we'll just kind of see what happens. All right. Awesome. Hey, thanks for All coming, right. Chris. Yep. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Stay safe, guys. Stay classy quarantine. <laughs> awesome.